Hello, me and Dad are here trying to get Sugar Honey into there so then we can sell her off tomorrow. Sugar Honey is a calf of Honey Oscar's beef cow, our only suckler on the farm. So we've got all the in calf heifers and honey and Sugar Honey and Patch in here to the pen. We're going to draft out Sugar Honey now, she's here at the back. Get her into the trailer and let all the others back down for the fresh break of grass. It's the Saturday the 12th of October, it's 6.45 a.m. I am on the way to collect Fiona from his school. They were doing a 12 hour, 12 hour outdoor sleepover for the homeless or something. And then the school would let them sleep outside so they had to do it in the pee hall. Anyway, so uh, bright and early start, Joe and Oscar are heading off to Tullomart to bring sugar honey to Tullomart. So I was online looking there a few weeks ago and the price Stocks in winter her are um, getting her really good, so yeah, she's not in castle time to get rid of her, so he's happy enough to say goodbye, I think. It'd be different if it was funny now. Family Farm YouTube channel. Can everyone go please subscribe on YouTube. It's a great growing channel. Also subscribe please. Got a few laughs. <laughs> Hilarious. Bear plate you. If there was no if there was somebody there who didn't know about it, if they can know about it now. Joe had an early start this morning. He was up at half four to get the cows milked by quarter past seven. Oscar got up and joined him down the yard at seven o'clock, loading honey up and getting, or sorry, loading loading sugar honey up ready for the mart. Half seven in the morning, Myrna's watching the sheep shepherd. <laughs> the three farmers down in Kerry. Um, I'm worried that when we go to get Dan's calf, she won't back into the trailer first. You know, she, we don't have her kept in there, you know? Yeah, of course he's using wood with high-tech technology. Okay, so sugar honey bin loaded up. Shh. Yeah, you're okay, sir. You're okay, sir. Good girl, come on. Shh. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Safe as houses, as the lad says. I'm gonna miss you. Mm -hmm. right, there's Seamus. Dan's bull. Dad is forcing me to record this contraption that is driving past us. That's a spud picker, I think. Wow, she's some beast. Absolute monster machine there. Never seen one of them in the flesh. <laughs> My goodness. All right, got them loaded off. Lift this up. Push that gate in there, push that gate. Uh, push it oh. So, Sugar Honey and Seamus are standing very quiet and orderly in their pen. You can hear the noise. <coughs> Getting busy now. So, two Irish with chips now, while we wait on the ales to start, and hold half ten. Get a little bit of time. Having a chat. All good. <laughs> Just got back from the Mars. Uh, sugar only had sold for one thousand and ninety euro, but due to taxes and so taxes and stuff like that, it'll it'll lower to one thousand seventy euro. Yeah. So you pay commission. That's for the mark for selling her, and then they take off uh, the VAT, etc. So she weighed four hundred and sixty kilos. We were doing a bit of a Guessing her weight, myself and Ellen, I thought she might have been that and then, you know, heavier cattle going through and stuff, I didn't think she'd be that, so I had guessed 420. I think Mammy had, I can't remember what Mammy had said, but uh, she'll put it up in the video anyway. But yeah, 460, she weighed really well. She's a little bit older, she was a July 23 born. Other cattle were making phenomenal money, but they would have been born, they were younger but, and they were similar weight to her or whatever, you know, so that was uh, why they were making bigger money, plus there were bulls as well. Uh, my nephew Dan, his calf, or she, we were calling him Seamus, he's actually Jude, it's the second calf. He made 1300 euros. Uh, he was a bull, an Albrecht bull, cross bull, and he was nearly 500 kilos, wasn't he? Oscar, he was 470 or something. A huge weight, real big calf, and he was December uh, 23 born, so he was highly sought after. So Dan, of course, delighted with that. But uh, 
been a long morning, a lot of waiting around on our cattle to come through. They were the last two to be sold in the sales after, even though we were here early. But anyway, it was a good morning. Good to see a different side of it, wasn't Oscar? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll go home now, get a bit of lunch, get a few jobs done. Drive it on. Evening everyone, it's Saturday afternoon the 12th of October. Just going getting the cow's milk here now, it's about quarter to five. In our day, wound down after our long morning in the mark this morning with Oscar selling him and my nephew Dan's Wainlands. So it was my first time at a Wainland sale. And I was well impressed, well impressed with the quality of stock, really well impressed. You see stuff online, farmers journal sometimes, pictures of these absolutely fantastic animals and you hear how the, uh, the beef industry is in decline, how suckler herd numbers are dropping. The standard and the quality of Wayland's that were on display today in Tullow was, in my mind, in a dairy by dairy farmer's mind, really, really top quality. So 90%, 99.9% of the Wayland's that were there today were either Charlie or Limousine. There was only two Aubracks, they were ours. There was two Piemonteys and maybe two or three at most Smentals. There was even one Frisian Bull Wayland in there. No Belgian Blue, which I'm not surprised about really. They can have cabin difficulty and stuff. But yeah, Charlet Limousines and Charlet's King, they got top price across the board. Some absolutely phenomenal animals, like just muscle and weight everywhere. There was an absolute classic bunch of limousine heifers came in, wheeling heifers. There were just there were six of them in the pen or in, in the lot to be sold together. And also was like, oh my God, draw clones of each other. They were just oh, absolute peaches. Whoever got them got some fantastic animals. So uh, yeah, really enjoyable morning. A little bit long, but uh, that's the way it goes. And like I said, uh, our first time at a win and sale, and I was well impressed with the quality. So for a place up for the farmers, keep it going. And also another thing, if you're looking for a proper full Irish breakfast anywhere in Ireland, go to your local mart on sale day, because you will be fed. We're very well fed this morning. Myself and Oscar looked after by Pearl and the ladies that work in Tullow Mart in the kitchen. Chips, which are full Irish, you cannot beat it. It's that is on farm. We are now less all of our beef animals apart from honey and honey batch and our two wagos that are going to be for the freezer next year and the year after so we're down to four beef animals on farm all dairy otherwise so back to some sort of normality uh, to your normal run of mill dairy farm yeah so the light how the last two days have gone selling stock was great so 35 beef calves went to the sale the day before me and dad are here bringing in all the beefies and a cold Friday morning, I think it's half seven or something like that. It's a frost, everything's everything's cold, including the calves, getting them in, they're all heading off at nine o'clock, I think, so. Getting the cow's milk now, we're working half in, half out, it's been going quite well. The milk fairy went earlier on today, so as I expected, our yield has dropped about a litre and a half, maybe two litres ahead, because the cows have come in and half their diet is now silage. Counteract that a little bit, we have upped the protein percentage in our meal, uh, we're now on a 16% protein nut, high energy, so that will help a little bit. But um, look, we're at that time of the year now where yield is going to be dropping. We're trying to slow it down as best we can. But because half the cow's diet is now silage, obviously not as good quality as eating great grass, yeah, yield is going to drop. We had our milk card on Wednesday, so there is four of our first calvers that are given very low literage. So we'll make a plan early next week now about drying them off. Ellen was trying to get a study done this evening and between that she is bringing our four kids here, there and everywhere. The girls are away wall climbing all day, part of the football club during the year. Uh, she runs away to his friends, Oscar's about to party to go set, so she's traipsing all the countryside <laughs> and trying to get a study done. So uh, it's been a long two days now getting cow's milk daily and getting beefies away. So looking forward to the couch or an early night tonight. Try it on. Sunday was a plain old Sunday, Joe milked the cows, I made a roast lamb dinner and we went down to Tala to visit my parents and then I studied, studied, studied. Monday morning, just after half four, getting the cows in. Earlier than normal start, we have a, a meeting in Port Leach this morning, we said Nolan are talking on the Women in Ag panel, so that's going to be a bit of fun. Hopefully, um, change in temperature overnight is bitterly cold for the last couple of days. Tin wind, cut you in half. The heavy coat on this morning, I had to take it off when I hit the parlour because it's uh, significantly warmer. I'll turn off the flash there now, we might be able to see some of the stars in the sky. Uh, no, <laughs> I can't see any stars. Oh, hang on. 
Here we go. Even though it's a very, very clear night sky, significantly warmer. So these ladies have had a 24 hour spell out now. We went out after milking yesterday morning because we only do one milking on a Sunday. They've been out, had enough grass to keep them going for 24 hours. So, or was well, a little bit less than 24 hours in milk later yesterday morning. So they're in now, they'll get their shot at the side of now today. And we'll swap over again. Happy Monday morning, everybody. Hope it's nice and dry where you are. Not too cool. There's a few cows there somewhere. Where are you going? There she is. So we're here in the Midland Park Hotel in Port Leash. Uh, it's just after nine o'clock, so an early start for us. Um, and we're here for? We're here at the Women in Ag National Dialogue Forum, is that what it's called? Forum. And we're part of a, a panel to discuss women in farming and just talk about our experiences and how we're doing things in our family farm. We were the first here, don't you know? Right and early, no harm. So we're just home uh, from Port Leash after attending the Women in Ag National Dialogue yep. this morning. So thoughts, Helen? What are my thoughts? Yeah, I really enjoyed the morning. I didn't really know what to expect. As I said, at the end, there was a real positive energy about everyone that was there. Some very good speakers that spoke passionately about their situation and told their story. That was really interesting to hear. The questions and answers section at the end raised a lot of issues that women in ag are very passionate about and have been trying to deal with and trying to get awareness about for a long time it seems so hopefully that'll progress for them and they'll get some traction on it and um, all the speakers were good for anyone there on an official government capacity let's say or semi state capacity yeah that's yeah that's true um there was interesting financial advisory things there that it's disappointing that we ha haven't known about it and um, so we'll I'll put up a few slides but different loans and banking things that are available to farmers up until yeah. the end of 2026 was it that there's funding and stuff there like yeah. so badly communicated that was a lot of what I had said about them um, how Chagas and uh, the department they can be really good and you know and have brilliant uh, services available but um you really have to go digging to find them like there's no one coming forward there's a serious lack of communication yeah. but yeah all in all a, a good feel to me people that you're friendly on social media yeah and uh, neck, neck, uh networking, networking. <laughs> yeah. follow us on youtube was my <laughs> departing comment It's Tuesday morning, it's nine o'clock. I'm on the way to college, have two written exams today and I spot this car turned over in the verge. My conscience wouldn't let me sit. I had to park up and run back and make sure there was no one in it. It turns out it was a local girl that crashed a few hours before on the way to work and she's fine. Me running back uh, back to my car, loads of people were stopping asking me, was I okay? They thought I had crashed the car. Anyway, all is well. Two exams done, principles of agriculture and beef. The graveyard shift was sheep and grass management. I don't think I was absorbing too much. I started to feel sick. So home collective feeling from school hurling training and into the bed. In the football field, as it's called, there was a horse chestnut tree. They can live up to 300 years. So our one stopped making conquerors about five years ago. It was, you could see that it was dead inside. In 2022, we got a cut down. So the, the stump that you can see Fionn standing on there has just been there for the past two years, growing loads of nettles around it. So today we got it moved. This is one for YouTube. Oh, did you? <laughs> so we dug up the root of our Harchesta tree, which was out here. And this is what it looks like now, upside down. Big Volvo struggling to keep her in. So this is the site from where our tree stump came. So the plan is now to get it all tidied up and leveled off. We pick off the timber that's left there, just a couple of bits of plastic and a tire or two. So we're going to pick them up. Hopefully we'll have a green field like we have out there. Our brown patch ready to get some seeds. Tuesday evening, the 15th of October. It's just six o'clock, cows coming in. We're late to finish the day today. We were starting out our big tree stump down there. So we currently have a yellow status rain warning, which is about to become active in about two minutes. 
from 6 o'clock this evening till 12 o'clock tonight. So there's going to be a dumping down. But anyway, we'll, uh, this is the half the cows that are out. Going to get them in. They're on the dry lie and uh, dry silage for the night. And the other ladies are going out. They've been in since this morning. So I think they'll be happy enough to get out too. Going up to a nice shelter. It's paddock there. The other multi-species feed. Uh, these ladies were in on our multi-species where we had the beefy calves and stuff there running for the week or so. Um, just cleaning off the tufts. That's why they're making a bit of noise now. Not overly happy, but there's plenty of pick there for them today. So they'll have a, do a good job doing that now. And in a couple of days time, if it dries up a little bit, if it dries up a little bit, we'll get some dairy washings out onto that and it's closed up now for the winter. And hopefully we'll have grass back on it next spring. Morning everyone. Wednesday morning, 16th of October. Just up here getting in the cows that were out. It's not as bright looking as <laughs> the camera suggests. It's just about quarter past seven. Cows are happy out after all the heavy rain we had last night with the yellow stars rain morning. I had them plan to go on to another bit of grazing. We had the fence and all set up for them and then realized that it was a yellow stars rain morning. So we had to come and get them into the multi-species here where a bit of shelter. Uh, we had a late finish then. We were sorting out the root stumping or tree out the top of the football field and picking up a bit of plastic and stuff. So. Yeah, it was a late finish, so... Knock on effect, it's sort of the latest morning this morning. But we're going to get there now. Delighted the cows are happy out, I thought they'd be giving out the stink to me. But I uh, gave them an extra stretch of grass, or a little bit bigger patch than they normally get. They seem to have weathered the heavy rain, not a bothering. We have to, lots of jobs on today. The main one is to get our dairy heifer calves weighed and dosed and see where we're going with them. So we're going to get these cows milk now and uh, drive it on. Even everyone, it's Wednesday evening, or sorry, Wednesday afternoon, 16th of October. Just up here, giving the cows a fresh pick on our multi-species field. They were down here last night and the cows are out today. We're uh, the minute trying to, or on that to try and finish it off. They've done a really poor job. It uh, was a huge amount of rain last night, over 15 or 16 mil there, according to the gauge. I was like drowned rats this morning a bit. Obviously dry matter in the grass is after plummeting and we're feeding extremely dry silage. First cut from last year inside. So cows, <laughs> it's easy to tell what their preference would be. So as you can see, if I turn this around on this now, this lower section of our multi-species field, particularly on this side, we split the field in half. We've really struggled to graze it out all year. So our in calf heifers are across the road. They're finished where they are now today. I threw them out two beds of silage yesterday to keep them happy. So I'm going to move them on to another section. Doesn't have a whole lot of grass on it, but we'll throw them out with a bale of silage. And that'll keep them there until Friday. And then the plan would be to get them up here and they can do a job nipping off the rest of this. Um, hopefully. They might be only happy, but to be okay. I only read today on social media that one and chocolate advisors that carrying heavy covers of grass on paddocks that have a lot of clover in them is not a good idea over the winter and um, they can smother out the clover and really uh, reduce your clover con content of your paddock so we'll try and nip off this as best we can and it will close up for the winter then we postponed weighing and dosing the calves this morning just weather had to move around a bit slurry and scrape the yard and stuff so that delayed me getting going plus our the girls are off school tomorrow so we'll have extra help. So I've been out tomorrow morning. Many hands make light work. So we'll have the girls out helping us down in the morning. So we we'll get that done first thing. Yeah, you all good? As you can see, I'm in full wet gear now. Winter is here, it's wet. It's an awful lot milder than I thought. I have a jacket on underneath this and I'm sweating. Yeah, heavy rainfall like there was last night isn't good to make grounds conditions a little bit sticky and a little bit soft prone to damage as we've said repeatedly all year that our ground can take rain because we're quite dry but you want little and often as opposed to downpours like there was yesterday evening and we had a yellow stars rain warning but sure look it's time of the year for the rain to be falling now good that it's mild we'll keep things tipping along we'll see how we go morning everyone it's uh thursday morning the 17th of october just have to have seven going get the cows milk here now Stat is on farm. We are wet. It's a very broken weather there the last couple of days. Ground conditions are getting a bit sticky, but as I said in the video the other day, we can take a bit of rain, so we'll tip along. Yeah, it means dry matter, the grass has plummeted, so cows are more than happy to come in and keep tipping away at their silage. We'll keep that up for now. So we're still on 4 kgs a meal. Our solids have eased off a bit because of the inclusion of silage in the diet, so we're on 5.1111. <laughs> of butter fat and back to 4.11 of protein. 
Uh, cell count creeped up a bit there. Combination of dropping the milking on a Sunday, yields dropping. Yeah, anyway, we're being proactive about that. So this morning I, I pulled out, we got our cell count results back there from the milk recording last week, two days ago. So we've a couple of millionaires, one lady particularly high. So drying her off, pulling her out this morning now, pulling out first calver that had the dead embryo, the Ken Bullen, so she's obviously not in calf now, so gonna dry her off as well. And then there's five of our other first lactation cows that are their yield has dropped below 10 litres they're on the milk recording last week so drafting all of them out there's seven and we're now drafting all them seven out this morning gonna throw them up in a bare paddock there for a couple of days and we'll dry them off uh, either tomorrow morning or saturday morning more likely saturday morning whenever we get a few dry cow shoes and they'll float around there then so <clears throat> the heifer that's not in calf or the first calf is not in calf she'll be sold the others can float around and be housed then next week when we get a spot for them yeah so that'll mean there'll be 120 cows milking then just the six rows which is grand makes management a little bit easier you don't have seven cows in a row at the end so it'll be 60 in and 60 out and we keep going it's very very mild even though it is quite wet which is kind of unhealthy it's kind of hard weather to work in to be honest with you because you're togged up because of the rain and then you're doing on the towel you're sweating uh, yeah look we'll keep tipping along our in calf heifers i actually didn't get to move them yesterday evening so i'm moving them now first thing after milking um onto a fresh pick and a bale of silage and like i said <clears throat> yesterday evening they're going to come to the milking platform now and clean up a little bit after the cows and they're more than likely going to be housed next week as well some of them if not all of them and um, we'll see what way grass grows. On the non-farming front, Ellen was in bad form yesterday. She had, um, not in bad form, she had tension, headache and migraine from the day before. So she was laid low. And I mean laid low wasn't good uh, all day yesterday. So fingers crossed, um, she'll be better this morning. Unfortunately, Saif has got a vomiting bug. Um, got from her first cousins down visiting in Granny's house a few days ago. So we had her vomiting in the early hours of this morning. We're off school today or seven Myrna anyway. So the plan was to Way calves with them and um, might just be self and learning how we see how it goes. Yeah, but hopefully that won't ramp through or drive through the rest of the house. That'll might just restrict to the girls. We'll see how it goes. Folks enjoy it, uh, particularly when the kids go back to school. All these folks come hard and fast. But look, we're well used to that sort of crack now. So hopefully it's only a 24 hour thing and we'll be bouncing back. Full of joys tomorrow. So there's our seven ladies drafted out for a uh, dry off now in a few days that's the high cell count cow there at the back just walking now and the six first calvers one not in calf other five in calf so like i said we'll dry them off there now in a few days all going to plan poor Sive has the van on bulk so myrna is baking brownies because she reckons they're going to make her feel better when she's feeling good again that's all it we both will cook our recipes except made with milk chocolate instead of dark chocolate because she don't like dark chocolate. Afternoon everyone, it's about half three Friday afternoon, the 18th of October. Yeah, it's getting a bit wet and wild now. We have Storm Ashley forecast in the next coming days. Yellow and orange war get warnings, status warnings all over the shop, uh, particularly for the west. So time to batten down the hatches, stay indoors if you can, and there's no need to be out, don't be out. We're going to plow away as normal, um, half in, half out. Cows going out this evening, it is quite wet and wild today. Extremely mild though, like extremely mild. I'm in my t-shirt under my milking gown here, I'm bucket and sweat. Cows are going out tonight, are in nice sheltered corner paddock. They'll be 100%, don't be bothering them. Lime is out, Good. the belly fulls of dry silage from today, so not worried about them at all. Ladies in tonight are, uh, yeah, they'll have belly fulls of dry silage that have been out today in the elements. So all is good in that front. A lesser known version of the traditional Irish brush dance, the farmer brush dance. In calf heifers are content where they are. Again, down by the river, nice and sheltered. Two extra beds of silage there today, keep them happy. Calves are over in the shed, in snug as bugs, fresh sheets and uh, yeah all is well in that front so stay safe for the weekend there's actually lots of football for on it's insane here in Wicklow we have county finals all over the place so you've also has a Ray Daniels final on Sunday morning which is much more important than any of the adult stuff yeah such a weekend for football it's crazy but sure look hopefully we'll escape most of it and it won't affect things too much so keep the head down and drive it on we see Joe Milton here this evening. He's just done the cows that were in the shed and they're in the background there. They'll be going straight out to grazing and the one in the collecting yard were the ones that were up grazing and they're going into the shed after milking. Just walking home, we had absolutely horrendous rain there. But after the rain, there's sunshine and rainbows. Just 
glorious. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you next week.